Hello again everyone, welcome to episode 2 of the Temperature app and in this episode we have a rare treat for you. I'm going to hand you over to Dave McQueenie, the chap who writes all these wonderful apps for us. And Dave's going to take you through how to customise the view on the app. For instance, you might have a different engine picture that you want to use. You might have an engine layout that isn't in the app. You might want to add in the gauges for the RPM and fuel into the view. So Dave will take you through the different files, what they do, how to set things out. Just a word of caution though, if you're not used to doing computer software, you may not realise just how in-depth this is. It's not simply a case of dragging things from a menu. And if you get a comma in the wrong place in a computer file, the app will just not work. And so do be wary of your housekeeping. Make sure you make a couple of copies of the files you're thinking of uh, amending. Work on one of them put it back on the transmitter, keep one of them untouched so you can always put that back in when you crash the app because you missed a comma or a bracket. Anyway, I shall hand over to Dave McQueenie. Uh, thanks, Harry, for inviting me onto the channel to give this quick explanation <clears throat> of how to uh, add engine images to the uh, temperature display application. Okay, so here on the screen we've got a text editor on the left, and we're editing one of the JSON files. Uh, JSON is a human-readable and computer-readable file that a, a lot of uh, Jetty apps and, of course, many other things use to contain uh, settings and, and setup information. On the right, on the top, we've got an image editor with an image of the three-cylinder radial displayed. And then down at the bottom, we've got the uh, Jetty uh, DC DS24 emulator with the telemetry screen from the temperature app showing the uh, the labels and the temperatures and you can see what I've got here is I've got an app running which is a sensor emulator so we're emulating the temperature sensor for uh, H1 reading with slider number one so you see it's blue when it's below the low temperature limit and you see up here on the screen that um, we have uh, in the square brackets, that's an array in JSON. So we have an array of so three different probes, H1, H2, and H3. So looking at the section here for H1, uh, we have green up until 10, yellow up until 50, and red up until 100. So it's blue when it's below the green, and then we should see it go to green at 10, and we should see it go to yellow at 50, and we should see it go to red, and then give the over temperature alarm at 100, and you can see I can do the same thing here to number two and to number three. So how is it that we arrive at uh, having this screen? Well, these screens are uh, pilot creatable, so you can extend um, the temperature app with as many of these screens as you'd like. Uh, we have a directory um, for the app called dfm-temp, and inside that directory is another directory called image screens. Uh, and if we slide the uh, the terminal emulator over, you can see I've done a directory listing of the image screens. And so these are all the image screens. Uh, and you'll see for each file name, there are three files. There's a .json, J-S-O-N, JavaScript object notation. That's the full name of, of the spec that we're using to store the data. There's a shortened name of .jsn, which we'll get to in a minute. That's the working data file. The JSON is the master copy that doesn't change. And then the PNG of the same name is the image, the picture that's used on the right hand side of the display. And what the app does is when it wakes up, it reads this directory and it looks for all of the, the, pair, the, the, the triples of three files and it lists those in a menu for you. So if you add the three prepared files for a new engine type, uh, to this directory, then you'll be able to see them and select them when you start the app. So let's slide that out of the way and take a look at this. So let's look at probe number one. Now, the way we've done this is um, first at the top of the JSON file, there's what's called the image key. And so that's uh, the file name of the image file. And that we expect to be 140 by 140 pixels. That's 140 by 140 uh, in the PNG format. We have a font for uh, the probe 
labeling, the H1, H2, H3 that you see near the cylinder heads, and we have a font for the text. And these are, if you look in the Jetty API documentation, these are the, the standard Jetty font size names that are available on the transmitter. And then we have the array of probes, and we can have as many as we like. In this case, with the three-cylinder engine, so our array has three clusters here of of points. So that's probe number one, probe number two, and probe number three. So let's focus on probe number one. And let's look first at XT and YT. So XT and YT are the coordinates of the text for the name H1. Now, in computer graphic systems, typically 0, 0 is in the upper left. Uh, X goes positive to the right, Y goes positive down. Um, and so what this is telling us is that these labels uh, start five pixels in from the left, and they're, the first one here is 30 pixels down from the top. Then if we go to H2, you'll see that's the same X. It starts at the same X place, and then that makes sense. They're lined up, and you'll see the third one is also at XT of 5. But instead of a YT of 30, this jumps to 60, and then number 3 jumps to 90. So they're spaced 30 pixels apart. So XT and YT lets you place the labels. The T is for text, the XY uh, I, I described before. Then if we look at XP and YP, those are the coordinates of the little labels H1, H2, H3 on the image. Now the way the app works is it considers those coordinates to be within the 140 by 140 uh, image of the engine just for ease in constructing them. So if I go up here to my graphics editor, uh, I'm working on a Linux system, so this is the, the, the GIMP uh, image editor, but all, all of your Mac systems and your Windows systems will have a similar uh, image editor. And you see the cursor here, and the cursor coordinates are down in this lower left corner. And you see up at the top here is near 0, 0. And then it says here that um, XP and YP are at 105 and 7. So if I go over to 105 and down to 7, that's the location where you can see that the H1 is listed. And so the reason I did it that way, that these coordinates are relative to the image, is so that as you're processing this image and shrinking it to a square 140 and 140, while you're there, and after you've already got it to the right pixel size, you can move your cursor around and then see where you think you'd like that label. And see here it says 101 uh, and 9. X is 101, Y is 9. Um, that's relative to the top left corner of the picture. Um, you could write that down, and then when you, we create the, uh, the file, you could type those in for uh, XP and YP. And if we go down here to H2, we see that H2 uh, has uh, 155 and 120. So we go over to 155 and up to 120. It's about right there. And you'll see that's actually off the image. Uh, the the right-hand side of the Jetty window is reserved for this image. The Jetty window is 320 by 160. So the right-hand square is 160 by 160. And so we actually have a little bit of extra room, about 20 pixels. So we could actually go up to 160 with that label because I thought we might have a picture that was cropped very close like this one is and need a little bit of extra space on the side. So you can see we took advantage of that for H2. And then if we look at H3, you'll see that XP, YP is at 20 and 140. And if we go down here to 20 and 140 approximately, you'll see that agrees with where the H3 symbol is. So that's how this particular file is laid out. And the simplest thing to do is take, take an existing file like 3cylinderradial.json make a copy of it with a different name, uh, and then edit it. Okay, so that completes the overview of one of the existing uh, sets of, of files and, and showing you how the basic setup works. Now, now let's go about uh, creating a new one. So one of the funny things about this app was uh, I wrote it quite a while ago when I was working with Karsten Groen, and some of you know Karsten, the creator of the, the CTU and the CRU and a bunch of really, really excellent, well-engineered, uh, Jetty telemetry systems, um, and Karsten had done an eight temperature, an eight, an eight input temperature probe. And as someone who loves, uh, you know, big five cylinder radial engines and things, you know, the idea of having all the cylinder heads instrumented and some of the exhausts in, instrumented with temperatures was terrific. And so um, I worked on the app uh, because I wanted to use Karsten's temperature sensor. And of course, since it had eight inputs, you know, we were typically 
you know, using examples of multi-cylinder engines. And so Harry told me that he had some interest from some folks in a temperature probe um, reading application. And so I dusted off the one I'd written for Karsten and made it generic so it could handle anybody's temperature probes. Uh, and as we were getting ready to think about releasing it, I noticed that we didn't have a single cylinder engine in our examples, which is kind of funny, actually, because that's, I'm sure, the most common use case. Uh, but of course, when the app was written, it was written to show what you could do with eight. So let's go through the process and see how that would work. So I've got my editor up here. Um, so let's let's do um, um, let's create a new file. So uh, single cylinder dot JSON. Okay. And that's in my image screens directory under DFM 10. You see here I'm doing it on the emulator, but it would be the same directory structure where JS is basically the apps directory. And of course that file doesn't exist. So let's go back and let's grab all of this and paste that in. And then let's start editing this file. So uh, single cylinder is what we decided to call it. So we're going to replace this name with single cylinder dot PNG. We're only going to have one probe because it's really only the one cylinder unless we add a, a you know exhaust probe or something. So let's get rid of all of that. And this is our very simple file for a cylinder, single cylinder uh, uh, engine. And this is the dot JSON. This is the master file that never gets changed. So whenever you reset back to master, you're resetting to the JSON. When we get done, We'll make a copy of this of, uh, of the JSON and do a JSN file, which will be the working copy. All right, now let's look at what we need to do with the image. So th this is an image of a single cylinder engine. It's a it's a JPEG file. It's 500 by 367 pixels. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm on a Linux system, so I'm using the, the GIMP image editor. But again, all of the systems will have their editors. What we want to do is we want to first crop this thing fairly tightly and with an eye on something that's pretty close um, to square. Um, so let's just kind of watch our aspect ratio down at the bottom there and try to get something that's that's kind of close to square. Um, and then we'll just play with it a little bit to get it closer. Let's see. Yeah, something like that looks good. Um, and so uh, we'll crop to selection. So there's our nice tight crop. And then we'll do an image, scale image. And we'll take this down to 140 by, OK, so it's a little bit of a rounding error. That's not going to matter. It doesn't matter what the pixels per inch is, because we're only going to use it as a uh, as a pixel diagram. If we wanted to, we could break the. Uh, lock here and take it to 140 by 140 make it just ever so slightly not square um, and then we can say scale and that'll scale it to the appropriate size uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to save that image into that same dfm temp image screens directory okay sorry i said save before but i should have said export because we're exporting it to a different file type we're exporting it to a png file and we're putting it into that uh, DFM temp image screens. And so if I go over here and look at my um, my directory listing, you'll see I now have single cylinder .json, which is the file up above that we edited uh, with all of the, the label information. Uh, and then you'll also see that we have single cylinder .png, which is the image that we prepared up here, 140 by 140 pixels. Now, as we're looking at this image, um, you know, a nice place to put the cylinder head temperature might be here at x equals 42. Um, so let's do that. And y equals... three two and maybe 15. Okay, and then let's resave that file. Um, and that should give us 
something that we can um, that we can start with in our app. Okay, now we're going to do a copy of the JSON to the JSN. So we'll give the app a working version of the JSN file. It will now, when we start out, be identical to the reference file. And that way, when the app makes changes, if you edit these configurations from within the app, they'll only rewrite the JSN file. And if you ever want to get back to kind of the factory setup, you can it'll go back to the JSON file for you. Okay, now let's turn our attention back to the emulator. We'll go into the main menu, and we've restarted um, our our uh, our Lua apps on the emulator. Uh, so we'll go over and click here, go into Applications, Temp Display. Uh, we go into the select display screen three cylinder and you'll see now that there's something called single cylinder that now we can select. Uh, so let's go back out and look at that telemetry window. Uh, and there we are. We have the, the H1 with the uh, temperature one um, reading on it. Uh, so you see it goes from blue to green. You get one announcement, all temperatures in the green when you first start. Then it flips to yellow. Then it flips to red on sensor number one. Um, and we have then our um, completed screen. Uh, now, if we wanted to, we could add um, uh, a fuel gauge and a tachometer gauge uh, to this display as well. Uh, and I'll show you that how to do that in just one second. We'll get ready for that. Okay, I've expanded the uh, text editor window a little bit so that we don't wrap around. I'm looking at the two-cylinder inline uh, .json file. And you can see in this case, in addition to probes, there's an array that's called gauges. Uh, and if I grab that, uh, I can take this, this text and make a copy of it. And I can go back to my other file. I can put this in. Uh, the JSON files ignore spaces. So just for readability, I can put in uh, the gauges there and specify the location. So I've got the name of the gauge, the sensor uh, that will ultimately be used, uh, um, you know, the name of the sensor in your telemetry setup. And you, you can edit, it doesn't matter what you put there. I mean, it's nice if you can put what you know is going to work, uh, but you can edit that on the app. And then I have the minimum and maximum of the gauge and then the locations of the center of the gauge specified again in the zero zero on the top left of the screen. X positive to the right, Y positive going down. So let's save that. Let's go back to our emulator. Let's reload our Lua apps. And we'll just pause for one second and make sure that we've got that all straightened out so we can see the gauges. OK, the, uh, the sharp-eyed viewers will, will notice that I had edited the JSON file. That's the main reference file. But uh, I had neglected to then make a copy to the working file, the .jsn file. So once I reloaded the applications with that JSN file um, copied from the JSON, uh, which is one of the important steps I mentioned before, you'll see that we have a fuel and an RPM gauge that will read from two of our telemetry sensor channels um, that we can assign uh, in the app and edit from the app. We don't need to edit it. We can edit it here in the file as kind of the permanent default, but we can always change it to whatever we like once you're on the app. And of course, if you install the app in multiple airplanes, you know, perhaps the gauge, uh, the fuel and the RPM gauges in those airplanes have different names. So you need to be able to edit it from the app on air, airplane by airplane basis. So that pretty much covers it. That's, that's how you create uh, a new image screen for the temperature app. You can create as many as you like. And as long as the app, when it wakes up, sees that that, uh, that JSN file uh, and the associated uh, image file, the PNG file specified in the JSN file, it will bring up that on the menu and then can bring up this image and then you can edit uh, those positions as I've shown you. And then, of course, the .json file is kind of that uh, factory default that whenever you do the reset in the app on a given um, engine screen, it resets to the contents of that JSN file. So thanks.